Hello. Oh my gosh. Everyone say hi in the chat. Let me know if you can hear me. I haven't done one of these in a little while. <laughs> so let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see me. We're in the yellow room, of course. The famous yellow room where it all happens. Um, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be celebrating. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be like this. That's the name of the project that's coming out. Um, yeah, let me get some let me get some vibes in the chat. Let me get some let me get some thoughts. Let me get some feelings. Um, how is everyone feeling about what's going on? Because I'm pretty excited. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask them also in the chat. Um, because I would love to answer any questions that you have about the project in the 15 minutes we have before it drops. Um, I'll just do a little intro of it that I feel like you should know, the facts you should know, I think, about this project. It's called It Wasn't Supposed to Be Like This. It's five songs, five new songs. I don't know if that's been mentioned. Um, if you're on my mailing list, I think you know that. But it's five new songs. And it is all live, all acoustic, performed in studio. And it is the story of heartbreak and redemption, classic themes. Um, if you've seen any of the playlists that I've posted, I posted the same playlist on Spotify and Apple Music um, in preparation for this coming out. Um, and I guess I can change the title of it now because it was an abbreviation because I was like trying to stay mysterious. But now I've revealed that the abbreviation stands for it wasn't supposed to be like this. Um, so I will be revealing that, I guess, in the in the coming days. Do you have a P.O. box? I actually do. Here's the gag. I do have a P.O. box. It's not open to the public yet. I will keep you guys apprised of when the P.O. box is open because I would love to see your art. I would love to see handwritten letters. I would love for that to be a thing that we do. Um, also, like, I get letters from fans at shows. Like, semi, pretty much every time I play a show, I get at least one handwritten note from someone. And at least my headline. And I would absolutely love to be able to do like correspondence with you guys. Um, and obviously I can't give you my actual address. So I would love to be able to communicate with you guys in a PO box format. Um, so I'll let you know when that is available, but it's not right now. Um, Victoria, I love that you're currently hidden in a closet to watch this because that's honestly the vibes. You have to scurry away. It has to be consumed somehow. It has to be, you, you gotta be, you gotta be at the party. You gotta be at the Kiki. Um, and I do feel like we're just kikiing. This is how I am on FaceTime, just rambling, rambling, rambling. I do usually let the other person talk, but not all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I made this project at Speakeasy Studios in Burbank. And I made it with a really, really incredible team. And Mitch Abraham, the director, literally slayed this so hard. Like, guys, he literally directed it, edited it, and colored it himself. He had a great crew also helping him out on the day of. But he literally edited and colored it himself. Um, and it's so beautiful. And it was such an undertaking because it's like almost 20 minutes long. And that's a lot of work. And also, the gag is, I did not record to a click. So this is like fully, fully like freeform jazz that he had to edit together, which... I just cannot, I, I've thanked him many times, but it truly cannot be thanked enough. Um, are the songs going to remain only available on YouTube? For now, yes. If for whatever reason you guys make this like go viral and it like blows up, <laughs> maybe I'll record these songs someday. Maybe they'll be like on a deluxe version of an album. Maybe I'll make them their own little side project, like as an interstitial thing. Um, but yeah, if there is a clear demand for it to come out on streaming, then maybe at some point I'll make that work. But for right now, as I said in my email into my mailing list, I am fully independent. I am fully self-funded right now. And it felt like making like a full on album and like releasing it and doing the full release cycle was something that I wanted to wait until I have some more support to do. And so this was my sort of like check-in with you guys. So you could see where I'm at. My favorite song on this project, that's really hard. Honestly, God as a Hitman is probably my favorite. Like, I just am so proud of the writing on that song, which is kind of crazy because I wrote it really fast. Is it the fastest song that I wrote on this album? I don't know. They, I wrote them all pretty quickly, but God is a Hitman I wrote really, really fast. And I just think it's like so like tight. Like the writing is so tight. Like there's no fat on that song. And I feel like it, I don't know. I just feel like it conveys a feeling so well and I'm just so proud of it. I also love writing my little country girl bangers. And I just feel like this is such a like dope country song. But I also really love the first track, which you guys, I guess I can just tell you, it comes out in 10 minutes. It's called Fever Dream. I've played it at a bunch of shows now, but I've never played it online. Like I've never had it on. I think I had it on TikTok for like five seconds and then took it down. 
Um, so OGs know, but um, yeah, Fever Dream is also really fun to sing. The song is my favorite to sing. Oh, that's such a good, I mean, honestly, God is a hitman because it like just sits so well in my voice and the guitar part is like, sometimes I write guitar parts that are actually hard for me to play. Cause like, there's like picking, like the wolves picking pattern took me a long time to feel comfortable playing live. So God is a hitman just sits super nicely. Um, and it's also, as I said, I'm so proud of the writing. So it's really fun to sing. The song that felt the most rewarding to write, other than God is a Hitman, I would say Sing for My Supper, which is the second song. Big reveal again. That's the other one that you haven't heard yet. Um, there's actually a third one that you haven't heard that I haven't mentioned. But Sing for My Supper is really satisfying, I would say. Um, there's a line in it where I say, um, uh, if, you lived here, if you lived here, you'd be home by now. Which, uh, true OGs know, Moon has a song called Home By Now as well. And I when I screened the EP yesterday at my agency, someone asked if that line was a Muna reference. And it's technically not. Like, I obviously did know the Muna song when I was writing that, but uh, I've wanted to write a song with the line, if you lived here, you'd be home by now forever, because it's like, obviously it's on billboards all over the US. Like when you're driving on like endless highways um, in like the Midwest and in the South, I feel like that sign is everywhere. In addition to all the signs about Jesus and the apocalypse. And there's a line about Jesus in that same lyric of the song as well. Um, and so I've wanted to write that for a really long time. So it's cool to sneak, sneak that in. Um, do I listen to a lot of country? Honestly, not a ton. I like, I'm very, it, like, if you look at the playlist that I made, the, it wasn't supposed to be like this playlist. I have a Patty Griffin song on there. Um, and I also am a huge Dolly Parton fan, but I wouldn't say like I listen to country like recreationally a lot, but I love to like reference it and like name check it in my songs. Like it's a huge influence that being something that I like, I feel like maybe you guys can relate if any of you are artists in the chat, like you have music that you love to listen to like on loop. And then you have music that you want to like be like an influence on you. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like a lot of country music, like I have to just be in the right mood. Whereas like there's other music that I listen to, like I, I can throw, frankly, I can throw on Taylor Swift at any moment. Frankly, if I'm being, if I'm being honest, exposing myself, I can put on Taylor Swift at any moment and like, it's a vibe. Whereas like country music, like I want to be, I want to be in a mood where I'm like really paying attention to it. Like specifically like old school country. Although pop country is also super fun. Um, I don't know if you guys know my bestie, Sam Harris, the lead singer of the X Ambassadors. Huge pop country fan. Huge. If you didn't know, I'm exposing him now. He loves pop country. <laughs> Um, any other genres that inspired you for this EP? That's a great question. Um, I mean, I feel like pop to a degree, like that first song that I mentioned, Fever Dream, it's like, is it a country song? Is it a pop song? Is it a rock song? There's, I feel like if I ever were to produce it out, that could be taken in a billion different directions and you guys will see, you guys will see when you hear. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like I'll just, I should really pull up the playlist so that I can be talking more about this. Someone said, if that's what you want. That is a beautiful song that I love that will hopefully be on my second album whenever that comes out. Um, dun, 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 dun. Okay, so on, <laughs> on the It Wasn't Supposed to Be Like This playlist, I have so much Maisie Peters because The Good Witch is the other biggest influence on <laughs> I hadn't even heard most of the songs, honestly. When I so when I, the songs on this album, the oldest one was or on this visual EP, the oldest one was written in May 2018. The last song on the project was written in May of 2018. Similarly to how my first album, the last song is the oldest song. I did that again with this one, kind of by accident. Um, and the most recent song on this album is "God Is Hitman," I guess, which was written in April. Um, and the rest of those songs, Como was written in November, 2018. Fever was, Fever Dream was written in December, 2022. Sing for My Supper was written in March of 2022, I think. Or wait, uh, Fever Dream was, Sing for My Supper was written in March of 2023. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of Maisie Peters on this playlist. I've got a Lizzie McAlpine song. Nobody Likes a Secret is probably my, I obviously love Ceilings, but Nobody Likes a Secret is my favorite Lizzie McAlpine song. She literally ate so hard on that. I have the 10 minute version of All Too Well. I have Prayed Away by Chloe because Chloe Bailey did what she had to do on that. And then there's a bunch of Taylor Swift. As I said, the Patty Griffin, the Muna, all things you know. Alison Pontier paid for another important song. Would I ever do a full country album, pop or otherwise? Yes. Yes, I would. I really want to do a country album one day. At some point, I'm definitely going to make one. Um, I definitely want to do a full pop album as well at some point. The second album, again, not like me telling you this is like, so irrelevant because I have no idea when it's coming out. I don't even fully know what it's called, but when I put out a second album at some point, it'll probably be 
pop, more pop leaning than the first one. There will be some country vibes on there. Some singer songwriter folky vibes, of course, as per usual, but just expanding it a little bit, getting a little more intense. Um, and then after that, hopefully either a full country or a full pop album for album three, whatever the hell that is. Uh, Mother Wound. We're working on it. Again, that one, like the whole point of me doing, if uh, it wasn't supposed to be like this, was so that I could give you guys some stuff without having to do the whole process of like recording and mixing and mastering and marketing and releasing. Like I didn't have to do that with this. Obviously I am rolling it out. I'm doing marketing, but I didn't have to wait on like mixing and mastering and waiting for like, you know, a nine month, 12 month, 24 month rollout plan. This was just like the vibes. Um, but yeah, Mother Wound, I recorded it in the studio with some friends of mine who are really, really talented producers and we still love it. Me and my team still love that song. It's so funny that you guys have only heard these snippets on TikTok. You like don't even know the full tea. Um, but yeah, working on it. Um, do I like to sit with songs for a while before sharing them? No, I don't. <laughs> but that's the way the music industry works. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, if it were up to me, like I would love to do all of my albums the way I did this visual EP, which is I write these songs, I record them all in one day, and then I put them out like three months later. That would be amazing. But that, because I, I filmed this in June, BTW. Um, so that's unfortunately not how the music industry works. And it's probably for the best because I'm super impatient. I'm trying to work on my patience. And I want, ultimately, as much as, like the people in this chat, like you guys know, like every single song that I've written probably for the most part, you guys will probably quote some of my reels and TikToks, but most people on planet earth have never heard anything that I've ever sang. Even like my most streamed song, which is, I think my ego dies at the end. I think that's like 10 million or 12 million streams. Even if every single one of those streams is from a different person, which it's not, there are 8 billion people on the planet and 12 million people is just not that many. Like that's just not that many people. And that's 12 million people over almost two years. So ultimately I know that there's a benefit into letting my music sit because it allows more people to discover it. And like some of you guys, I don't know, you know, when you guys got on the Jens McCray train, you can leave that in the comments as well. Like when you first heard me, but some of you may have joined in 2019 when white boy came out. Some of you may have joined up last week, you know, like, so I, I know that there's a lot of value in letting my music sit and letting people discover it. Um, and so that's something that I'm working on. My favorite lyric from the visual EP Oh gosh, that is so hard. I mean, I can tell you some of my favorite lines from each song. So from Fever Dream, actually no, I wanna leave that for to be a surprise because Fever Dream is like, that's like my angriest song, Loki. I like one off a little bit with that one. <laughs> so you'll have to see. For Sing For My Supper, what's my favorite song off Sing For My, my favorite lyric off Sing For My Supper. Also we have two minutes left guys. We have literally two minutes until this drops. That's crazy. Um, off of Sing For My Supper, I am the Oracle, genuine article, you'll never be who you pretend you are, which is in the snippet. That is in the snippet that I posted on TikTok that you guys really liked. Um, so I love that line. Off of God as a hitman. Oh God. Um, I mean, maybe God don't need to hire a hitman for me to die for you again. That's crazy. Um, Colma, California, my favorite line. Um, I really like it ain't half as bad as it might seem. Um, I also like... I wonder if he liked fame when he thought of being married to Marilyn and Coca-Cola. I love my little Americana moments. And then my favorite so line from the last song, which title reveal is, I don't miss you. Um, I will always save a space. It's true for the man I thought you were, but I can't, I don't, I won't, I don't miss you. Uh, what is your favorite emotion to write in? Interesting. Um, I like uh, calm and lucid. <laughs> I write so much from a place of ins genuine insanity and I love to be like super calm and lucid and reflecting back on a time of insanity with a clear head. Um, we have one minute left. Wait, how is this possible? What's happening? Guys, uh, guys, uh, one minute in it. My English friends get so mad when I do a British accent because it's really bad. Um, yeah, this is happening. This is a real, and this is me. Yeah, see, someone just said they joined the Jensen train in January of this year, which, by the way, that's a sleigh of you. Like, you're still early. You're still early dice, babe. Still early dice, babes. But, like, I put out my first album in March of 2022. So for someone to discover me in January 2023, it's like, you got to let that sit. You got to let it simmer. My favorite song at the moment is I'm Your Man by Mitski. Um, that's kind of it. I mean, there's other songs. Oh, I also love Teeth by Noel Maskell. That's my girly pop. I love that song. Um, I love Who We Are by Hosher. 
Lacey off the Olivia Rodrigo album. It's 10. Wait, is it happening? I think it's happening. It's over. Go 